for a look at the national papers today. We're joined by plain English editor Andrew Pegler. Andrew, good morning. Good morning to you too. So we're looking like we're, we've got a, a pretty good 2010 ahead of us with a, an economic recovery set to take place? Yeah, it's going to continue on. The wonder down under will continue on over the year. Uh, now, the major reason for this is resource projects and a buoyant house market. So this is the front page of The Australian? Front page of The Australian, Joe, right. yes. Uh, they will, uh, c they're going to come online despite the uh, withdrawal of two key uh, Stimulus measures being the uh, the first home buyers grant and the business, business investment, investment allowance, mm. uh, and the uh, business uh, the, the the sort of resources aspect of this is going to really start coming online uh, with the uh, forty three billion dollar Gorgon gas project over the next six months when that starts coming on. Um, and uh, this is all very interesting and good news for Australia. Yeah, I want to know, how's everyone going to get a piece of it? How, how are you and me going to get a piece of it? I, I don't know, Joe. <laughs> I think if you're in the house market, you've got a piece of it. But if you're not, you're getting more and more locked out. I mean, that's mm. just an ongoing... It's an ongoing problem, that one. I don't know how they're going to solve it. Mm. And it's confusing with the, uh, these uh, economic stories that, that have been coming out over the past week. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, bosses, CEOs were very cautious about the outlook for 2010, and now today um, everyone's going gangbusters. Well, it's like the old story. If you put two economists into a room, yeah. mm, you'll have you get... ten different opinions on the one thing. <laughs> so, yes, that goes on. So it does look as if economists tend to agree that economies will continue to grow and, and their, their economies will gather pace even with stimulus measures being gradually withdrawn next year. Absolutely. Look, I, I, I just think instinctively one senses that we're sort of getting through this yeah, GFC mess. The worst mess. hopefully is yeah, behind us. Yeah, yeah. Now, is today the, the day that all the uh, stories come out from the Cabinet um, documents that have been locked up over the past 30 years? Is that where this Margaret Thatcher story yeah, yeah, has come yeah. from? Yeah, yeah, One yeah. of the more yeah. bizarre stories yeah, that uh, yeah, yeah. we've come across for a little yeah. while. Yeah, well, uh, as, as you say, part of the 30-year release project. Uh, uh, now, Margaret Thatcher proposed to uh, Malcolm Fraser to buy an island back in 1979 to accommodate the Vietnamese refugees. I mean, you know, the joke potential there is quite extensive, but we won't go there. Uh, the, uh, the, her fear was there would literally be riots in the streets if she accepted the, what I think it was about 10,000 boat people that the UN had asked the UK to take. So she has gone to Malcolm Fraser, got on the blow and said, Mal, let's buy an island. Uh, <laughs> Uh, whack them all on there. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a Wilson Tucky kind of idea, doesn't it? <laughs> it just, or a Barnaby Joyce, whatever, just, you know, nut casery. Uh, and it's actually, I mean, essentially it's not a bad idea, but uh, Malcolm Fraser uh, was sort of, uh, uh, you know, lukewarm on the idea, but the whole thing got um, the kibosh because uh, Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore's fear was that it could become a rival entrepreneurial city. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the things that go on at that, that level are just always so funny. And it kind of sounds remotely familiar to the uh, the situation that we're facing today as well. With, with uh, Christmas Island, yeah. yeah. It certainly does. It certainly mm. does. Uh, I thought it was interesting, the stats on this. Australia took 220,000 Vietnamese refugees. Uh, Canada took a little bit more. The US, more than a million. Uh, France, 90,000. So, I mean, our generosity at that point, well, I thought what I thought was, was quite extensive compared to what might be perceived as our generosity it today. Does, it does seem like a trickle now in comparison, Well, it? yeah, they get two or three thousand a year, but 200,000 Vietnamese refugees. And they've come to this country and done wonderful things for Australia. Mm. Mm. So it's an, you know, it's, a, it's an ad for open up the doors a bit more. <laughs> and you're looking at uh, graffiti. The Australians got a few bits and pieces we about do. graffiti yeah, there, wars. There's a graffiti war going on in the UK between Banksy, as some people would recall, Banksy is a very famous stencil artist in the UK, and Robbo, who was the original graffiti artist in the UK. And um, uh, we've got some graphics, and I'll run you through that. First of all, we start with Robbo's piece, which has been untouched for 25 years. Wow. This is a seminal piece of graffiti in London. Where, whereabouts is that in London? It's in Camden. Okay. Camden Town, London. And it's, it's not fenced off or anything like no, that. No, it's, it's just, just out, there. out of respect. Yeah. People haven't touched Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You don't touch another man. You know, if it's historic, you don't touch another man's tag, man, et can, can, can you see the beauty in that? <laughs> well, I'm a bit lost on it. And now the next <laughs> shot, the next shot, Banksy, who's a stencil artist, put this piece over it, which uh. has had a guy uh, 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 painting over it. 
So it's sort of a generational, aggressive generational statement saying, look, this is the new, this is the new thing, man. Don't that stuff is old, <laughs> old school. We're with a new vibe. Do you have to say man after the end of every sentence? Always. <laughs> Always. And this is like, now, don't touch my tag. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <Man>. dude. dude. <laughs> uh, so he's come on. He's done this, right? Now, Robbo has been pretty unhappy about it, and the, 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 the c community has come out and said that's a bad thing. Robbo has snuck in overnight and written King Robbo there. But the witty thing is, it's written so that uh, the, 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 it appears that Banksy's character is actually painting the phrase <laughs> and paying homage to Robbo. So it's sort of a wit off as well as this a graffiti off between these two guys. This is terribly clever, isn't it? It is. It's really, 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 really fantastic stuff. Sounds Ru like Robbo has more fans than Banksy. Well, Robbo is Robbo's like the grandfather of graffiti in, in the UK, and Banksy is like the enfant terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's a horrendous uh, uh, pronunciation, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it hasn't gone down terribly well, that one. A, a, a great Andrew. battle on the streets. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A Andrew, very briefly, Van Morrison becoming a dad again at the age of when uh, most men are grandfathers. Well, at 64. Jeez, well done, Van. He's come out uh, and he's had what's now been labelled as a minivan. Uh, <laughs> and the next step will probably be a people mover, I would have thought. Uh, why, why would you do it at that exactly, age? How exactly. Old's, how old's the partner? The partner, uh, it's actually not clear, but right. she's his manager. Mm. So it's all in house. Probably half his age. Yeah, well, I, you half know, that, luck, that's really. rock and yeah. roll, isn't it? <laughs> Andrew Pegler, on that note, okay. thank you very much <laughs> yes. for coming in. Happy New Year to you. Same to you guys. See Cheers. you later.